Hey, I'm Aaron Piret. Welcome to the Automation Simplified video series featuring Julin Vacuum Systems. Hi, I'm Aaron Piret, and today I'd like to welcome Business Development Manager Philip Hart from Julin Vacuum. Hey, Philip. Hey, Aaron. Good Thanks to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, always a pleasure. Thanks. In the end of arm tooling collaborative robot market, I like to go to Philip and talk about processes, end of arm tooling, availability, and what he has in the form of why would we use their products. Julian is, is it looks like we've got a lot of variety here, and we do, but there's a reason for that because different different applications are going to call for different types of grippers and so on and so forth. We've got one gripper specifically here, the Flexi Grip. There's four different, or there's three different applications that this one gripper can work with, and and basically you change out the bottom plate, the foams, and and um, and you, in a frame, and you basically got what you need for a different project. But one of the great things about Julian is our customer service, and and so if you've got an application that that your customer needs, or you know you know this because we work on this. I all do the time. several times. So we you you'll call me. We'll have an application. We'll go through it, and then I'll help you choose what gripper system is best or what vacuum system is going to be best. Um, and if we can't find something in our standard line, then we'll, we'll go with a custom system. I, I think one of the neat things that I try to instill in a lot of my customers through you that, that you yourself taught me was the ability to drop a product in your hands and you even send me a phone video, sure, which I've yeah. texted to my customer and say, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, it's very impressive because I know you guys have a lab. I know you guys go back and set stuff up and run stuff through and send like a nice little quick, we can do this with this, what do you think? And I've sent it to my customers even the same day they've been thrilled. Awesome. Yeah, and that's and that's one thing that we're that we're really proud of being able to do is the in-house testing in our lab. We've got a, a large 225 kg robot, which is obviously much larger than a collaborative. Um, but you know, we've got capacity to be able to do testing. So oftentimes we'll tell the customer, um, a box is not a, just a box. You know, a brick is not just a brick. Uh, you know, a, a panel is not just a panel. It, there's so many different variances of different products. And so oftentimes we're gonna want to bring those products in and do the testing in house. Because when Julian sells a system, we stand behind our product and we guarantee it to work, especially if we've done the testing ahead of time. So um, I've seen, Mr. Francois Julien himself um, bend over backwards and, and give products away just to make a system work efficiently in, in the way that we sold it. Phil, explain to us why a foam gripper is better than a silicone cup or an, a, a rounded vacuum cup. What makes your product more specific? Why would I want to look at your products over another? Sure. So there's going to be many applications out there where suction cups are, are going to be a great tool. Um, the, the only issue that a suction cup is going to have is going to be on products that are either porous, have uh, rough edges to them or rough surfaces to them. Um, and then oftentimes uh, there's going to be situations where undulation of the product, product itself uh, may be off and the suction cup can't actually comply to the, to the layer itself. So a lot of times we're going to see this on a brick. I'm just holding this one up. I mean, you can tell all of the different, um, different super, valleys. Super porous. And, and it's very porous as well. And um, you're, you're never just, you're never going to be able to seal on that product. And um, vacuum grippers are just that. We have to have the ability to seal on the product because vacuum, high vacuum levels is where our capacity comes from. So essentially with a foam gripper, Julian's been in the business for 60 years and so um, we've developed foams over the years that are able to um, literally comply to the layer that you're, that you're handling. Philip, I noticed a, uh, a lot of different uh, sizing and styles here. Um, when we come talk about end of arm tooling or collaborative end of arm tooling weight, um, obviously size is important, including weight, maybe. Yes. Uh, tell me about the sizing. What, what have you done here to uh, help out with 
make my robot last and make my robot safe. Sure. So we've got several different standard components. We're going to have mini grippers. We're going to have flexi grips. We're going to have plug and picks. And now we've even got the safe and light line as well, which is it's an all foam gripper. It's very, very light cuts down on your uh, end of arm tooling weight so that you can maximize the capacity of your collaborative robots. These grippers are fantastic. They're a little large for, for picking some of these smaller products. So let's go with our check valve flexi grip, which is gonna be a, a GS80. So this is a GS80. Uh, it's got 16 ports in the foam and the frame actually has check valves in it. So I can have, I can be partially covered on this gripper and the check valves that are uncovered will actually close and you don't, you, you retain all of your vacuum on your product. So if I got an uneven surface area mm -hmm. and I'm not covering that area or, or there's nothing to cover, the vacuum itself will seal and continue to pick up with what it has. That's right, that's right. And all the grippers, uh, most all of the grippers that we carry are gonna come in either a port, a check valve system, a bag handler, which is gonna look similar to this. And then we also have some new technology, which we, we will show here in a little bit. Um, this is actually a foam valve and you can't even see the ports in that, um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, just doing some testing on this, uh, what we can do is, this is a brick, obviously. It's, if you can tell, there's, those holes go all the way through, so there's no magic here other than in the Julian gripper itself. I'm able to pick this from the hole side because of those check valves. So wow. essentially those check valves are gonna close where the holes are, and then I, can, then I can actually handle the brick. And you're gonna pick up that brick? I'm gonna pick up that brick with this little 80 millimeter gripper. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. So there's a lot of capacity. This and this. So there's a lot of capacity there. And this gripper was never really intended to pick, you know, a brick that weighs this much. I mean, that's a heavy brick. I mean, it's not just a brick. It's a porous brick and it has holes all the way through it. All the way through it. Yep. And you just simply picked it up with one of your, your one of the smallest ones I brought. Smallest <laughs> vacuum products. That's awesome. Yep. That's great. This is this is the reason why why cups are not going to work for a specific project, right? We've we've got grippers in this in in uh, in the field that are handling full layers of bricks coming straight out of the oven. No way. And they, and massive massive grippers that are handling that. So we took that technology. We kind of narrowed it down. I mean, Julian was was born and bred in the lumber industry sixty years ago. Sixty years ago, excuse me, and so we had to learn how to adapt to not only the climate of the lumber industry itself, but the products that they pick, the, the, the difficult environment that, that uh, those grippers were going to be in, meaning we had to be able to consume particulate. You know, a lot of, a lot of grippers are going to try to capture that with a filter or something to that effect. We don't use filters. We want to we pass particulate and dust and all that debris out through the system because we, we've designed our systems that way. They're very, very robust and there's very low maintenance on them. That's awesome. So I can actually pass through, say sawdust, et cetera. Corrugate dust. Pass yeah. through the vacuum gripper, has no filters, gonna go straight through and out. That's exactly right. That's great. And on our larger systems, like uh, these are obviously, all of these are using Venturi to generate the vacuum, um, which obviously is, you're using compressed air for that. But we also have uh, large regenerative blower systems. So on those systems, we, we do the same thing. If it's a, if it's a high dust or high, high um, area with, with a lot of... Nastiness. Yes, all of that. Then we pass that all through, this, through the entire system. Um, we've actually got a lot of systems out in the field, especially in, a, in, a, um, in an area where there's a lot of sawdust. Um, they sometimes... After a year, we'll have to take the gripper apart to, to blow the sawdust out of the frame and whatnot, but that's very, very rare. And, and oftentimes we can, we can alleviate that stress as well just by capturing it in like a Solberg style filter gotcha. between the blower and the gripper and so on. And so okay, so you're showing off, you're in the wood industry, mm -hmm. you came and picked up a brick. Yes. But 
there, there's lots of other projects and products out there. there. Are. there I, are. I mean, I've seen in your office alone, I see a lot of food, I see yes. a lot of chemical, mm -hmm. I see a lot of packaging. What else? What? What else can you show me? So this is going to be another unique little item here. And this is going to be something that unless you had a very specific cup arrangement or cup array, it'd be difficult to pick this because I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up very well right here, but there's a lip there. And then obviously it's porous all throughout. So this is a very difficult part uh, to handle with a cup unless you put two cups right here. I mean, and then you wouldn't have a lot of capacity. So with that being said, I can have complete coverage or full coverage over that and the check valves are closed where they need to. So there, we've got a lot of capacity here. That thing's just not coming off. Come. Nope, it's on there. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is if you'll hold this, I'll turn uh -huh. the hair off. There's a very quick release there as well. So that foam, one of the great things is obviously it's able to, to comply to this layer and then create the seal on that layer regardless of, of whether it's porous or whether it's rigid or um, got edges or, or divots or anything like that. The other thing is, is that that foam is constantly, when it's not under vacuum pressure, is constantly trying to push the product away. So you get a very quick release as well. Almost like a blow off effect. Almost, almost. And we can actually add that functionality too as well. So, um, so, and again, all of this is being used with the same gripper. We haven't changed anything. You know, this is still the same 80 millimeter check valve gripper. So it, there is a, a decent potential that if I was doing packaging or multiple products, mm -hmm. or if I had a, a um, application where I'm picking something up, dropping something here, moving something there, I might be able to even use the same gripper. So that is always 100% our goal. Um, one of the great strengths of Julian, and this is, not something that we'll uh, get into today, but is end of line palletizing. Building large custom end of line palletizers that handle eight, 10, 12 boxes at a time and have 18 zones. You know, that's when we're purchasing, you know, 27 valves from you and cylinders <laughs> and all that from you. Um, but what happens is we're able to pick all of the product. We're able to pick all of their boxes, whether that's five SKUs of boxes or whether that's 117 SKUs of boxes. We're able to lay those zones out. We're able to palletize. We're able to pick the slip sheets and the pallets all with the same system. So it's always our goal to be able to, to hand you a system that says, this is the products that I need to pick. This is the array of, of what I need to handle for my Scope system. of work. This is my scope of work, exactly. What system is going to be best for that? And that's that's where that's where Julian I think really shines is that is that customer service is that ability to be able to do a lot with very little. So what we've got here is we've got text, and then we see this all the time in the plastics industry where where something is needed to be indented or or, or made into a, an illegible writing or some sort. Yeah, it looks like a patent or a part number or something right. indicator. Yes. That, that does not allow for any surface area for that, for that suction cup if you're wanting to use that. So let's just assume that it was all over this. It's not, obviously, but I'm going to try to handle that, that product right there. And what, what the foam allows us to do is it allows us to be able to create a seal in the areas where that indention is or that writing is. And so I'll place this here. And so there's no loss of capacity because the foam is actually creating that seal around that product. So if a customer has a high-low product, uh, or, or uh, and in some cases over here, maybe it's uneven, right. slanted, diagonal, some kind of brace, some kind of support, this is where you're going to reign supreme over a suction cup. Right. You're able to do a workaround in the voided areas with the check balls to be able to complete a lift with your system. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. So let's move on to this because this is this is even more important than this. So this is a this is a product that many may be familiar with. It's like a it's a composite decking board. It's like fiber board. It is mm -hmm. essentially. Um, the customer came to us because they knew that our our system was was really the only one that was going to be able to handle this. Um, if you can tell the texture of the product itself. What you're seeing is a lot of ridges and valleys that do not allow for any type of silicone cup 
to adhere or not adhere, but um, seal on this product. The uh, the weight of this, it's a decking board, so it's actually fairly heavy. It looks, it's heavier than it looks. A lot of these have concrete particulates in it, I believe. And what I see here, where I'm, I, I notice the difference, they've, they've kind of fed in a fake granular. Yes. So I, I can see, I know you can't see in the camera, but I see tons of voids back and forth, almost as if this was, say, an oak tree. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And it is pretty heavy, so... So what we'll do is, again, we're taking the exact same grouper we've been using. We'll just place it on there, turn the, turn the vacuum on. No issues. So ba ba basically what you keep showing me from the brick to the mount to the board to even the cups, you have a lot of use with very similar or, or the same vacuum assembly. Exactly. And that's, and that's the one thing that I think is the most important is being able to get the most out of what you're purchasing. Well, Phil, thanks for the great demonstrations. I appreciate all of them. And for those of you out there that have an application that you'd like to discuss with us and Julin, please give us a call. We can get together with Philip make some magic, and, and show you the Julian difference. Thanks, Philip. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me.